Bula and welcome to The Lens at 177. On this show, we are so pleased to introduce to you the brand new Australian ambassador to Fiji, Mr. Ewan McDonald, Bula Vinaka. Thank you Bula. and welcome to the show. Thank you, Felix. Uh, Mr. McDonald is uh, no stranger to Fiji and the Pacific, and he also holds uh, another title, the Special Envoy, which he will uh, shed more light on. And we'll possibly just begin the interview with, uh, with that, Mr. McDonald, if you don't mind. Um, you know, a lot of people, people will be asking, what does the title Special Envoy actually mean? If you could just share the, that with us. So, thank you, Felix. And Bula Vanaka to Bula. everyone here in Fiji. And I firstly wanted to, to thank you very much thank for the you. opportunity uh, to talk with you today. Uh, Fiji Times, over 150 years old. It's a, a great privilege to uh, have that first interview here uh, in Fiji with you and your thank paper. You. Um, so, firstly, um, Felix, I'd like to say how privileged I am to be here in Fiji and be right. appointed yes. as the Fiji High Commissioner. Uh, right. it's, uh, it's a beautiful country. It's got a great uh, love of Australia and Australia has a great love of Fiji. Yes. As you know, so many of us travel uh, here, including me on many occasions with my my wife and family. So to be appointed here as the High Commissioner is uh, my primary responsibility that I'm ecstatic about having that opportunity. Thank you. Uh, we've also, as you rightly pointed out, had the opportunity to be appointed as a Special Envoy, uh, the first inaugural Special Envoy uh, in the region. And the real importance of that, I think, is around its location yes. uh, for the first time in the region and here in Fiji. Uh, of course, Fiji uh, has a very key role to play regionally right. with the Pacific Island Forum yes. uh, here in place. Uh, and of course, even this week uh, with the uh, Finance and Economic Ministers meeting that's yes. just concluded that's uh, right. up at the uh, up at the uh, Pacific Island Forum Secretariat uh, premises. Uh, that was, I think, a good example of seeing all those leaders from around the region uh, here, and for me, in my special envoy role to support our minister, uh, right. Stephen Jones, who is here, and to, to actually have a gathering here on Wednesday night with those leaders from across, across the region. So the special envoy role, I think, is very important in terms of our commitment, yes. Australia's commitment to the region. Uh, I think it's a real demonstration of the Australian government's, um, I suppose the way the Australian government places its importance right. on this region. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to, to undertaking both roles. Yes. Um, as I understand it, um, you are the most senior uh, diplomat that we've had. And you know that says a lot about how important um, Australia places Fiji. Um, so, in your uh, role as the special envoy, will you be uh, travelling around the Pacific as well to you know visit other countries? And uh, yes, I will. Um, I will, of course, have my primary role here in Fiji, and I think uh, Felix, as you've mentioned. It is the most senior appointment we have had in the region. Uh, I was very happy to be appointed yes. here. Uh, I really wanted to come here. Uh, right. And as I said to you earlier, so did, of course, my wife as well, having visited here quite a lot. So to have the privilege of being appointed here and to do that in a way that elevates our partnership right. to a new level, as you know, we have the Vivale partnership, yes. uh, which is our family partnership between us and of course the very strong bonds we have together and mm. they apply right across the board, uh, be on political matters, yes. on challenges for uh, both of us in the region, mm. security, uh, economic yes. and of course people to people. Uh, so to be able to to be here and work closely with the Fiji government, right. uh, but also, of course, 
the Fiji people yes. and the communities and to have the opportunity to actually travel and see this beautiful country in more detail. I've been here many times before, yes. but this is a real opportunity to go out and <laughs> see everything um, and, of course, interact with uh, it just, uh, you know, the people I've interacted with over a long period right. have been very generous to me and have treated me with, uh, with utmost respect and I will do exactly the same uh, right. to, to the people here in Fiji. So, yes, I will be travelling in the region as I need to. I think uh, our regional responsibilities together right. uh, are very important. Yes. Uh, you know, the region has many challenges. Um, and as a special envoy, I think being placed here in the region and working closely with Fiji here on those regional matters uh, is very important. Right. Um, I'm just going to move into something that a lot of Fijians would probably want to um, hear more about. <clears throat> um, Foreign Minister Penny Wong announced in 2022 the Pacific Engagement Visa. And you know that provides a pathway for 3,000 Pacific Islanders to get permanent residency in Australia. Um, has there been any progress in that front? Yes, uh, there certainly has been progress. So that Pacific Engagement Visa is going through our parliamentary processes at the moment, as right. with all democracies, yes. Parliament is very important in terms of uh, that process. Um, right. So that is proceeding uh, at the moment, um, and I expect will be concluded, you know, sometime this year. Right. Uh, that will, as you've rightly said, provide for, for 3,000 um, people from across the region to, right. to gain citizenship uh, in Australia. Uh, the government has been very, uh, I suppose, committed to, to a process similar to New Zealand around a ballot process that provides equal okay. opportunity for all, uh, all people that to, to be successful in, in gaining an opportunity for citizenship and of course us then supporting people to, to obtain employment right. uh, as part of that. So uh, of course countries will make their own decisions on participation yes. uh, in that engagement visa initiative and how many right. uh, each country would wish to, to have participate. But from our point of view, I think it's a good opportunity mm -hmm. uh, for us to demonstrate the importance of the region. This is yes. not something that's outside the Pacific. This engagement visa is just here in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I'm looking forward to, to that being concluded and, and put in place. Thank you. Thank you. I, and I know uh, a lot of um, Fijians would be looking forward to that as well. Um, another issue a lot of Fijians also discuss on social media and uh, in various uh, platforms is how New Zealanders have uh, they enjoy a right of a boat and you know when they enter into Australia. And as you said earlier, you know we are a Vuvale, we are a family. Uh, will we ever see a similar um, sort of uh, situation for Fijians as well? So I think uh, already through the initiatives the new government is putting in place, we're yes. seeing uh, movement towards greater movement between the countries. So right. in Australia at the moment, there's around 39,000 Pacific Labor Scheme uh, right. participants, of which Fiji is around 5,000 yes. of those. Uh, also, we just talked about the Pacific engagement of it in visa, that's 3,000 uh, right. being able to pro progress to citizenship. We've also heard, of course, um, with the Pacific Labor Scheme that uh, feedback around uh, family. Yes. Uh, so where the Australian government is piloting 200 right. uh, family accompaniment uh, as a pilot. Right. Uh, this year as well. So I think as we progress over yes. time, we will see more opportunity uh, right. to move between us. And yesterday at the economic minister's meeting, there was a lot of discussion around economic integration and right. how that might 
uh, work in the future. So I think you know these discussions are, are ongoing, and I think you know those initiatives the government have put in place yes. demonstrate um, our commitment. And of course, uh, you mentioned the Vivale partnership, yes. and it's uh, it's uh, I think. I remember when it was signed. I was here with the Prime Minister at the time right. and uh, it was a fantastic partnership to sign yes. at the time and it will be reviewed I think later this year yes. uh, to make sure we're aligned with our priorities right. but it's a special partnership yes. as you know. Yes. Um, so let's see what happens in the future. Thank you. We'll take a short break and be right back. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to The Lens at 177 and we're having a great discussion with the new Australian ambassador to Fiji, Mr. Ewan MacDonald. Um, Mr. MacDonald, uh, we're going to move to uh, um, how Australia has been such a great Vuvale partner. Um, you know, you've been a very uh, close development partner since from way back, but ever since uh, 2020, you have actually given Fiji total direct budget support of $364 million and supported us throughout the pandemic. That was a huge challenge for Fiji uh, with vaccines and support with medical and, uh, you know, so many other areas. So you've already given us so much and you must be well aware of how um, our debt situation. You know, we're close to 90% of GDP at the moment. Uh, the government is trying to find a way to, uh, you know, address that. But how how long can Australia continue to, you know, assist us with, with in such a manner? Um, so, Felix, our relationship is extremely important to us, and as you talked about. The Vivale partnership. Yes. Um, it's how we work together right. on our priorities and in my previous role I was well aware of the importance of the pandemic in terms of its impact on yes. Fiji and its mm -hmm. tourism but also uh, how you and the people of Fiji were responding to that through vaccinations and the like and it was very important that Australia was able to support you right. uh, with that priority. Uh, I think it through that whole pandemic process mm. it's it's very interesting for me to see now that Fiji, Australians coming to Fiji are coming in greater numbers yes. than before the pandemic yes. and if you try and get a room at uh, Denaru Island down in yeah. Nandi or you try and get on the plane yeah. it's uh, it's a bit tricky there's a lot of Australians wanting to yes. to come over and uh, I must say the other thing that I have been absolutely wrapped about is the new direct flight between Canberra and yes. uh, Nandi so yeah. uh, and in fact our whole team went back this morning on that flight uh, oh. to Canberra and of course for me, that is uh, that is fantastic because yes. it opens another gateway onto the US and elsewhere. Yes. Uh, it builds a direct relationship between Canberra and uh, Fiji here. Right. And, you know, through that whole pandemic, the economic impact of that was massive for all of us, yes. not just Fiji. And uh, we want to ensure that we are supporting the region recover right. and of course Fiji is a key part of that and as you re, um, as you mentioned earlier mm. uh, nearly 370 million dollars yes. over four years of budget support but you've used that budget support 
you know, aligned with your economic recovery and yes. to hear and discuss with the Deputy Prime Minister yesterday in a meeting we had with Minister Jones to hear their approach to the last budget, yes. their thinking around the economic recover, recovery. So I think Fijians can be assured of Australia's ongoing support. Um, Thank you. Because our partnership is incredibly important and uh, yeah, that's yeah. all I can say is you can be assured of our support. Thank you. Know, Thank you. Um, you know, the Pacific and Fiji especially, uh, we are very vulnerable to you know, apart from climate change and all that, uh, there's other external threats like terrorism. Um, you know, our borders uh, need a lot of assistance, um, screening people coming in and, and all that. So how is um, Australia helping us in terms of uh, monitoring, um, you know, possible ter terrorism or terrorists entering the region and entering Fiji? Yes, yeah, so I think, um uh, Felix, in relation to that, we are guided by your priorities, yes. Australia. It's very important that any support we're providing is Fijian-led in right. terms of those priorities. We've certainly heard uh, the concerns you've had on security, of which you've just outlined a number. Of course, one of those uh, relates to climate, and yes. you and I talked about that earlier in yes. terms of the impact on your own uh, your own local uh, village. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I think we've demonstrated that where that priority is identified, Australia will provide support right. accordingly. So in relation to climate, for example, uh, between now and 2025, Australia will provide at least $700 million right. to climate adaptation and support. Uh, we also announced a new development policy right. uh, just this week that talks about the importance of responding to climate as the number one security challenge yes. under the Boy Declaration. And again, the government's committed to a further $1.7 billion of funding over the next five years in relation to that. Right. In, in new funding in relation to that. Is that to the region? Or yeah, that's for the region, the region as a whole. Uh, at the moment, we're providing to the region $1.9 billion, which is a record amount to right. the region. And of course, that encompasses all the budget support and bilateral uh, support we talked about, as well as yes. regional and global support. But in relation to security, more traditional security, yes. uh, so around border security, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, transnational crime is a concern yes. for all of us. Um, and the way Australia looks at this is we're part of the region, we're together, it's our home, right. it's your home, our home. So those security matters impact on us all. Yes. Uh, so the support we've provided to Fiji uh, in accordance with your priorities relate to, for example, uh, around defence, yes. the Black Rock facility, which right. I had the privilege of being at when it started, when the shovel went in, as well as seeing it now, and yeah. it's a fantastic facility. And I saw a number of your local yes. people working on it as they were building it. Yeah. Uh, and to see that as a facility, a training facility like it is now, and the role that can play in the region, right. I think is a great credit to Fiji. Um, and I can just see that evolving as we go forward. Yeah. Also, of course, our Australian Federal Police yes. playing a key role with your police mm -hmm. here in terms of training and support together uh, to address uh, those uh, security matters uh, you referred to. Right. And also on the border, mm -hmm. uh, border security, which, as you know, is incredibly important. Yes. Austra the Australian government in the last budget provided a number of Australian Border Force officers okay. to come out right. as new positions mm -hmm. onto the ground after hearing from countries around wanting greater support around border border security. Right. Uh, so I think that will be a great opportunity as well. So, mm. you know, from our point of view, I think we see that as a big challenge for all of us. And as right. you know, in the Pacific Island Forum last year here in Fiji, mm -hmm. uh, the leaders talked about 
the region taking responsibility for its own security. Yeah. So that I think puts a special responsibility on all of us, including Australia, mm -hmm. to play its role yeah. in relation to that. Oh, thank you. Um, the ANU's James Bentley referred to you as the Pacific Czar. Ah. Uh, you know, uh, and, and he even questioned your appointment. And uh, in his words, uh, there are no less than ten senior executive staff in DFAT working directly in the Pacific. So, just your thoughts on that? Uh, I wouldn't comment on James Batley's comments on, <laughs> on calling me a czar. Um, uh, that was when I was appointed to the head of the Office of the Pacific yes. and that was a brand new role right. uh, four and a half years ago yes. uh, that I returned, uh, returned from my posting in, in New Zealand to, to take up. Right. Uh, I didn't realise that, that he'd highlighted uh, <laughs> that we had 10 executives but uh, what I would say about that yeah is that that demonstrates to me the Australian government's commitment yes. to the region and right. to Fiji. Mm -hmm. And as we said earlier, mm -hmm. this is the most senior appointment ever in the region by the Australian government right. to Fiji, yes. which I think demonstrates Australia's commitment, right. uh, not only to Fiji, but to the region. And um, yeah, I think it's important that Australia is putting uh, the resources into ensuring it can provide the support mm -hmm. to honour its commitments and of course our Foreign Minister, our Prime Minister, our Pacific uh, Minister have all uh, been very focused on the region since the new government came yes. in. Uh, I've travelled to many countries including here with uh, Foreign Minister Wong. Right. Uh, that enabled the very first speech she made in the region mm -hmm. to occur in the very first week yes. of the new government here in Fiji, Fiji. Yes. in the Pacific Island Forum and I think there could not have been any stronger message for everybody right. around her commitment and to think that she has been to every Pacific Island Forum member yes. uh, in less than 12 months with all her other responsibilities I think yeah. demonstrated very much the Australian government's commitment yes. to listening mm -hmm. to the region, the new government and then being able to respond to those priorities and you've seen similar mm -hmm. uh, commitment from the Pacific mm -hmm. Minister, yeah. Minister Conroy and of course a highlight here in Fiji yeah. for us was where our Prime Minister Prime Minister Albanese met with Prime Minister Rambuka yeah. in, I think it was October yes, so, so. last year. So I think that demonstrates very clearly how important the relationship is between us right. as bilateral partners, but also I think it demonstrates the Australian government's commitment uh, across the board. And to see in a regional meeting just yesterday, yes. the Assistant Treasurer travelling yes. here to be part of that. I think not only did he enjoy it very much, uh, but I think it was a real commitment to ensuring that he understood and was able to take back to Australia some of those economic issues that you talked about earlier. Right. Thank you. We'll be right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. and welcome back to The Lens at 177. We are having a very enlightening conversation with the new Australian High Commissioner to Fiji, Mr. Ewan MacDonald. And he's been sharing a lot of things about, uh, you know, uh, visa scheme and uh, regional security. Um, but now we're going to move um, 
on to another issue and uh, that is uh, you know something that's often talked about the growing um, china presence in the region so you know australia has been a very significant partner development partner to fiji and the pacific region um, and in recent times the support has actually been quite substantial even more so than before so the question a lot of people are asking is um, has the pacific become increasingly significant as a theater for strategic competition mainly due to china's uh, bid to grow its political economic and security influence in the region yeah i think felix um as you said earlier australia's had a long historical commitment to the region mm -hmm. um, and that's continuing uh, and yes we have increased our funding here uh, but I think that reflects the commitment between us in right. terms of our our partnership uh, in terms of the region itself uh, the development needs are, are large right so we certainly encourage uh, all countries to contribute uh, to the needs but to do that in a way that's aligned to the priorities yes. of those countries uh, Australia's own approach around that as you know is we are very transparent in terms of our funding and what it's being used for right um, we we do a, a range of priorities that countries uh, see as important. Education, health, uh, supporting women and girls, uh, not just infrastructure, not just uh, those things that people can see, but other right. things that are very important to the country, governance and those sorts of things. Uh, but we do that aligned to the priorities. Right. In terms of security, um, geostrategic um, contest has has yes. certainly uh, been elevated. Yes. I think that would be fair to say uh, in the region. But the region itself, Australia has a view that security of the region is a matter for the region. Right. That is our position and it's also the position that was reflected in that communique of the leaders uh, earlier this year, that not this year, last year, here in Fiji, Fiji. That, that talked about the region taking responsibility for its own security. And the reason I think that's very important is, uh, of course, we work very closely together. We talked about the AFP to, to, you know, yes. together. We talked about defence together. So I think the region taking responsibility for its its own security is is very important uh, but of course we are encouraging other partners to uh, to to help uh, with those development needs I talked about earlier but right. not create situations for example where countries might be caught up in unsustainable debt particularly right. at the moment with all right. the economic so we're very conscious of that in Australia that we're not putting countries in a position that they can't meet their uh, their responsibilities around lending and we right. we base a lot of ours on the multilateral development banks and how they determine right. the lending capacity of countries so you know from our point of view we will as a Pacific Island Forum member right. uh, work very closely with the region on the priorities and the the guidance provided by the leaders uh, of the Pacific Island Forum, and that would apply in security as well as other other sectors. Right. Um, just uh, you know, with uh, the security agreement with the Solomon Islands, for example, um, and China's you know also trying to have similar similar agreements with other Pacific um, Island countries as well. Is you know, is that uh, also a reason maybe Australia has stepped up its uh, support to the region? Uh, no, I think Australia has been stepping its support up for some time. And I think, as I said earlier, the, the new government right. uh, has increased uh, its support in terms of uh, official development assistance. Right. 
but it's also just put out a new development policy right. that reflects the priorities of the region on development. Uh, so from my point of view, uh, the way we align our expenditure in Australia is aligned with the priorities of the country. So if those priorities are around security and of course climate is a, a very important one and as I said earlier we're providing uh, significant funding uh, in relation to that. But right. also uh, where countries are wanting to develop infrastructure, develop their, uh, their police force or their border force, then we are providing that support. Uh, of course, in relation to the Solomon Islands Agreement you referred to, of course, yeah. sovereignty is a key thing for Australia. Right. Countries yeah. make their own decisions, mm -hmm. uh, but we as Australia would encourage countries to, to be transparent in terms of, uh, of those arrangements because they have the potential to impact on all of us in the region. Right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move to my last question. Um, a lot of Fijians would not be aware that you're also, you also were an Aussie rules umpire. And uh, you're in a country where we don't play Aussie rules. Uh, but, uh, you know, just uh, will, will you miss going out to watch uh, um, not Collingwood, Essendon. <laughs> Oh, well said. Will, will you miss going, going, to, going out to watch uh, Essendon Bombers, you know, do their thing? Uh, because you're here in a country where we don't play the game, unfortunately. Well, Felix, you should have told me that before I accepted the appointment. I, no. <laughs> um, uh, well, as many Fijians will know, um, because uh, you have a lot of talent here in Fiji who can play in the AFL. Right. Most, the most obvious one is Nick Nan Nat Natanui, I think, yes. is, is, is the pronunciation of his name. But anyway, he, yeah. Nick, mm. sensational player for the West Coast Eagles, right. um, caused uh, the Essendon Bombers a lot, of, a lot of trouble in a lot of games, <laughs> right? So I know there's a lot of talent here, so maybe I can scout a few Fijians for the Bombers um, while I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the reason I love the AFL, so, so I can explain to people, is I grew up in Melbourne, right. uh, which is a very uh, AFL orientated city. Yes. Sporting city, love sport, yeah. but so do I, of course. Yeah. But, uh, and I grew up, my, my grandparents were born very close to Essendon's ground. Right. Uh, and my parents grew up just very close to the ground. So nice. I was indoctrinated very early oh, boy. in the Essendon colours uh, and I think my whole family is like that um, but of course uh, I will miss not seeing the games directly yes. but at the same time the way the bombers are travelling at the moment it's probably a good <laughs> thing um, and of course I've spent time Felix of mm. course in my roles getting to love rugby right and rugby league and yes. I've seen the uh, the Drua a lot uh, in Australia mm -hmm. and uh, they are starting to look pretty good they made the finals as you know this yes. year uh, the Fijiana the women's yeah. side is incredible to watch fantastic aside uh, I also noted you won the Pacific Nations Cup That's right. in Japan. Not only did you win it, you won it quite easily right. in Japan. So I was asking whether the Wallabies could be swapped over to another group because <laughs> we're in the same group as you in the World Cup in a yeah. few months. Yes. So as I said, you know, I really asked Fijians and the side to please take it easy on the Wallabies in the World Cup. I think it's the other way around. <laughs> And of course, uh, you know, the, the silk tails in rugby league as well. Yes. I've been, so I've been following very closely right. uh, all of the sport. I'm very supportive of any sport and Fijians excel. Um, and of course, many of your, your key sports people are playing, playing in Australia and yes. elsewhere yeah. in the globe. 
um, and I look very much forward to attending sport sporting events here, including the schoolboys, schoolgirls, yeah. rugby yes. that's occurring. I think the that's finals right. are the about the finals are on this weekend. I think. Yeah. yeah. So again, that yeah. that would be great. So. Yeah. Yes, I'll miss being at the MCG on Anzac Day, but it's been a while since the Bombers have beaten Collingwood there, so <laughs> it's probably a good thing that I'm not there, and I really look forward to meeting a lot of Fijians at the sport here in, uh, in Suva and Nandi and yes. Latoka and elsewhere across the country. So, yeah, I am really looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our show, but uh, it was really wonderful meeting you, and I thank you on behalf of the Fiji Times for allowing us to have this interview. And thank you, thank Felix. You I've much. really enjoyed the opportunity to get to know you, and thank you very much for the interview. Thank you, Mr. McDonald.